Hello, good morning or good evening to everyone. Welcome to Mainframe Tutorial. So you're watching Mainframe JCL Practical Tutorial 3. So, uh, mm, I mean, based on, uh, I have been uploading these videos uh, from past, almost from past three to four months. So I got uh, many comments from the, uh, from the viewers like uh, to post a videos, uh, the practical videos. So based on the comments, so I thought of sharing uh the mainframe things i mean the mainframe practical things through videos thank you so much uh for all the viewers who who is watching my videos i would be coming up with more and more videos uh starting with the practical tutorials uh, so in this tutorial i would like to share uh, something about ibm utilities which is very very important and when you're working with the in the real time the we will use mo mostly this uh, this IBM utilities so in this video I would be covering about IEFBR 14 and its important usage and what all the things it can create so mostly IEFBR 14 it is used to create a physical sequential data set it is used to create a partition data set it can delete a physical sequential file it can delete a partition data set file or create a temporary data set uh, Temporary data set is very very important in, work in working real time. There would be a large volume of data uh, that uh, that need to be processed, uh, that need to be processed and stored the result to an output file. So in order to hand in order to process that large volume of data, instead of storing that data uh, temporarily in a separate uh, separate file. So you can create a temporary data set where you can store a result for a temporary purpose and st send back the temporary file to a different, I mean, to, uh, to a physical file. So it plays, I mean, the lifespan of this temporary data set would be uh, up to the job, I mean, to the job until the job ends. That is, if the job is running for 10 seconds or 15 seconds, the lifespan of the temporary data set would be for that particular period. Okay, before I go to the actual practicals, uh, just we need to understand about the DD name and its meaning. So these are the system defined DB, D, DD name, which we would be going to use whenever we use IBM mainframe utilities. So DD names is uh, what exactly the DD name system stands for. It is used generally for passing a parameters. Like if you are, if you are going to sort, if you are going to use a sort JCL or IEB generator to copy members, so we use some parameters uh, in this in cart. So I, in case if we are not using it, then we go for dummy. SysUt1 it is used to accept the input file. SysUt2 to store the output file. SysPrint it is an output file for printed output from the utility. That is, uh, it can show the number of records process, written code conditions, and everything. SysOut output file for message from the utility. Sysu dump it is the output file for a system dump if the program fails. It dumps the program uh, whenever a system, uh, I mean whenever the program gets failed. It is easy to the user to understand what the exactly the issue is. So let's go and connect to a terminal and see how do we create a PS, PDS, uh, delete PS, PDS, PDS and temporary data sets. Okay, now I'm connected to this. Just uh, first we will create a PDS member. Okay this would be my job card as usual and uh, just give your comment jcl using iefbr uh, 14 this is delete sorry so i will go to ps okay first we'll see how to create a ps ps file jcl using iefbr 14 to create a ps file so i have a, a dd name given vk kumar test.ps new catalog delete it means that i'm going to create a new uh, PS file it need to be cataloged if something goes wrong it need to be deleted so primary and secondary primary should be 3 and secondary secondary I'm giving it as 2 sorry 2 and release sysda uh, data storage PS record format FV record length 40 and 400 that's it just submit this job and yes it ended with maximum return code zero okay then i'm going back now 
we will create PDS enter in edit mode okay the same the job card remains same and the steps remain same so here I am giving it as PDS and you will give an extra parameter that is for partition member and the data set organization should be PO in order to create the PDS member then submit enter Maxis is zero. That's it. You have created your PDS member. Now, after creating a PS and a PDS, so you need to delete it, right? Just enter. Just before going to delete this, just make sure if it is really created. Copy. Start. 0.4. And uh, paste it. Enter. Yes, it's been created. How do you identify if it is a PS or PDS file? You can see the organization over here. If the organization is PO, it indicates a PDS or else you can see the data set name type PDS. Okay. In the same way we created the PS file, right? Just make sure if it is created. Yes, it's been created. So you can see our organization is PS. Okay. Now coming back to delete the delete the PDS member. It would be same IAFBR14 utility. You have to give your uh, PDS member name. Give old, delete, delete. Why? Because this is this this PDS member has been already created, so it becomes old. And then instead of catalog, there will be a catalog. Delete from catalog and delete it permanently. Then submit. And it with written code zero zero. Okay. Just copy. Just copy and check it see data set not found in the same way we will try to delete this uh, delete a ps file okay everything will be same but except everything will everything remain same change your file name and you really have delete old delete delete that's it enter submit okay return code is zero now your ps file has been created deleted so check it if it is deleted yes no data set names found okay now you we are done with how to create the data set how to delete how to de create a pds member and how to delete a ps file and how to delete a pds now we will look at the temporary data set so how to create this temporary FBR temporary. See, everything remains same. Just instead of giving your data set name, you have to give ampersand ampersand temp DS. That's it. Just submit it. Enter. Successfully created. That's it. So, so these are the various important uh, points that you need to remember as part of the. Uh, IEFBR14 utility. So if you want to use uh, all these steps at a time, so you can write all these steps in a single JCL. So step one is to create a PS file, and step two is to create a PDS member, and uh, uh, step three is to delete a PS file, and step four is to uh, delete a PDS member, and step five is to create a ps file okay so i'm going to submit this all these steps now we have uh, early before to this job i ran five different jobs that is to create a ps create a pds delete ps and delete pds and create temporary data instead of using multiple jobs i can ca i can use i can use many steps in the single job and run it just submit it see it's created and uh, and it's been submitted and that ended with zero zero so that's all for today's video thank you so much for watching this video i would be coming up with more and more videos if you like this video kindly please uh, feel free to share comment like on my youtube channel thank you have a great day